I'm trying to get Bibi to jump on, eh? Great. Okay. Kogi, do you have any proxies? Just one. Okay, oh, so sorry, there three. we've got it. Sorry, three. We got three. Okay, okay. so we've got a quorum. Let's go for uh, it. Yeah, it should be. Should I give me a second? I just we take three plus. Uh, we just had another one join us. Now we just had another one join us. That's okay. Sarkis. We just got thirty nine percent, so we're good. Uh, okay. Sorry, which unit is Sarkis? Oh, that okay. That's a uh, th uh, which unit is Sarkis? Sarkis is three oh one. Okay, fantastic. So okay, we're so we got thirty nine percent. We're fine. Excellent, excellent. Well, welcome everybody, and thank you so much for joining us at this uh, annual general meeting for Terra Mayor. Um, the um, um, agenda has been circulated. There is one addition to the agenda, which is item number five, which is the chairperson's report. Outside of that, um, let's start with number one. This is the notice of our annual general meeting for Terra Mayor. Uh, we have 37 units, uh, unit owners in Terramir who've been invited to join us. Uh, we do have a quorum. Um, we've got one proxy and... Uh, three, three proxies, Dr. Pimentel. Sorry, three proxies. So that really takes us over our quorum requirement. Uh, the nominees, Kogi, 2.2? We haven't had any. Okay, no additional nominees. Uh, right. We'll do that at... at at our, um, election of trustees. Right. So we've got proof of notice of the meeting. Uh, and let's talk about the agenda. Are there any items on the agenda or any items that anybody would like to add to the agenda? Um, Ava? Yes, Sherry. I, I, I don't know if this would I don't know if this would consider being an item though, but I personally would like to maybe bring up, maybe re-looking at bringing the building down again and redoing it. All right, so that would be 17.1. I'm just going to say redevelopment of building. And I, yeah. would second, I would second that. All right, fantastic. Uh, redevelopment of Terra Mare would be item 17.1 on the agenda. Any additional items to be added to general? Yeah, we need to talk about the water as in a borehole okay. or an Ajojo tank. Electricity as in a generator, the boundary wall with salamander, the back embankment. Just hold on a the, moment. 17.3 electricity. As in generator. Okay. Oh, and by the way, uh, Cliff, I like your inverter that you've put in. Thank you. Um, and that's an another thing I'd also like to talk about is metering the water. Because it looks like the... Um, owners are subsidizing the people that are renting. We did have a decision on that last year, didn't we, Dave, in terms of meters? Um, Ava, Tony was looking at it and he got guys into quotes, but apparently it would be very difficult to meter all the units individually. Um, all right, so let's leave that under general, but we'll talk about it when, when we get under general. Any additional items, yeah. uh, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, yeah. Waterproofing of the box gutters and the back embankment. And the common boundary wall with salamander. Oh, yeah, I went into that, by the way. Okay. Go halves on the cost, yeah, on that one. And then painting, general painting of the building as in interior and exterior. You know, Mervyn, when you start firing these things off, all I see are special levies. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> and that's our new rule. Well, Clifford, I don't know if you were introduced to our rule, by the way, before you did your renovations, but from 2022, anyone who does renovations is responsible for special levies for the next three years. Uh, I think his I think his renovation was done before time frame. Eh? <laughs> All right. Any additional items, guys? All right. Look, um, it's pretty free and flexible if we need to add items under general, but that certainly are seven items that we've added under general. So thank you for that. All right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, you've seen the minutes from the previous general meeting of the 12th of September 2021. Um, what I want to do is I just want to call those up, and what we will then do is we will go through them just page by page. 
I will ask you to um, combine a discussion on amendments, um, uh, uh, corrections a, 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 and amendments uh, as we go through them page by page, and then we'll come back to matters arising from the minutes. If you want, we could do matters arising uh, amendments uh, at the same time. It's absolutely up to you. Uh, but let's go through them page by page. I take it you've all seen the minutes which were circulated by Kogi. I'm just going to give you a full screen on them and see if I can blow them up just slightly. All right. So this was a meeting on the 12th of September 2021. It was the postponed and no, it wasn't the postponed. It was the annual general meeting uh, for 2021. It was late in the year. Um, so uh, uh, page one, uh, normally, um, uh, no, let me not, let me not uh, presage that. Uh, any uh, amendments, corrections, or matters arising from page one? All right, moving on, page two. <clears throat> any amendments, matters arising from page two? Uh, let's go through them. Approval of minutes, fine. Presentation, consideration of the reports by the trustees. A schedule of replacement values, um, 99 million uh, for the replacement of the building. I know that there was a question at that stage. I haven't seen it reflected in these minutes about confirming that value. There was a questioning of that value. Kogi, uh, have you subsequently determined that this is the correct value, a replacement value for the building, 99 million? And uh, can I help the uh, either? Yes, please. Uh, Just uh, it's Kubis from the vault. Ah, yes, Kubis, sorry. Yes, thank yeah. you, Kubis. Just for information for all the people, I myself is a professional valuer, so that's what I do every day of my life. Uh, I had a look at, it was Murfin was a valuation company, and they valued it for 99 million. I had a look at the valuation. I think it is a credible valuation. But the problem was, is although Murfin valued it for 99 million, Santam didn't uh, uh, insure it for 99 million. They still insured it for something like 140 or 160 million. I, I can't remember exactly. Correct. So, so they, they didn't have the correct value. So I pointed that out to Koji and she followed it up. And that's why it was in 99 million. And now with a 10% increase, it, went, it goes up to 108 million for the current year. So I think that that's been done. So just, just to confirm, Kubis, you're saying that if, if God forbid the building burnt down tomorrow, uh, the replacement uh, cost would be 110 million. That's correct. And may, may I just explain a little bit it's not only the building cost, it's uh, what one must keep in mind is if the thing burns down, then you have demolition costs, you have rubble removal costs, you have new prof professional fees for, for architects and quantity surveyors, and all that is covered mm. in that 17,898 <coughs> per square meter. All right. So uh, the Murfin did put it in, I, I checked it, so I think it is a credible valuation. Kubis, thank you very much. That is extremely useful. Thank you so much for that as a matter arising. The extent of the uh, insurance, public liability insurance, we've got 100 million cover in place. Um, I, I'm sorry that Ron is not, Ronald Gordon is not on the line because he could have given us his opinion on whether or not that is sufficient, 100 million in place, and the risk of loss of funds, uh, uh, 800,000 cover in place. Um, so that's where we are with that. Uh, any matters arising from this page or amendments? No, moving on to page three. Uh, Jeannie, uh, Jeannie asked a couple of questions which were then answered. Telephone costs were high. Uh, have you looked at the telephone costs, uh, um, Dave and Kogi? Uh, they haven't been high that I know of. Right. Um, are, they, are they standard? Are they normal? Um, either the, we don't actually have a landline telephone here. I work with my cell phone and then with the gate, we've got a SIM card that I top up with cash every now and again. So there shouldn't be telephone costs. There might be uh, costs for the, the Wi-Fi and things like that. Yes. Okay. Any matters arising or amendments to page three? 
Can I ask you something first, quickly? Just one sec. Of course, Jerry. Uh, on the wi on the Wi-Fi, why can't we take like a package, or have we got a package where it's like you pay just a set fee every month? So that's an interesting question. Um, uh, Dave, uh, what happened with that plan to to essentially connect connect every unit in the building? We we had a request at some stage. What happened with that? Okay, we need thirty percent of the people to show interest, Iva before they'll they'll do it for nothing but we need people just to show interest to, to show interest it. in what uh, after the hookup to actually to after the hook in taking the wi-fi service the fiber that's service that's correct they they're not obligated to take it we just have to before they install everything they need 30 percent of the building to say that they might be interested so as a matter arising kogi could we then just do a survey of all owners explaining um, that uh, simply by a show of interest, not commitment, um, they are then prepared to essentially uh, make every unit ready for uh, fiber. Yes, we can do that. All right. And I take it, Dave, there's no cost to doing that. No, there's no cost to doing that. Either we have got one, two, three net in the building at the moment. They've actually put fiber in the building. And then it's up to the individual to decide what package they want to go on. Well, wouldn't that then be exactly the same service? It would be the same. It would just give another option. All right, Dave, could At the you... moment, all you do is you... Subs I mean, we've put fiber in, and then every time we go down, we activate it with them. You take, uh, it's, I don't know, it's a minimum of 10 days or something. Oh, so really? So you can do it on a monthly so, month basis? Yeah, yeah. And we activate it. No, not even monthly. For the few days that, that you're there, you just activate it and deactivate it. Yeah, you can do that with one, two, three net. It's a holiday package because I yes. know that, I don't know if Sarkis can hear me if he's on the line there. Um, I know he had a problem trying to speak, but he can hear us. He is on the line active. He's WhatsApp me. Um, but on my units and his units, they all had Wi-Fi. And they're all, you could take holiday package or unlimited packages. Uh, all right. And it makes so, up it's so all I your choice. This, can I ask this between yourself, Mervyn, and you, Jerry? Is there any chance you can get whoever your consultant was to contact me? And then I will make a, 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 a thing available to all of the owners to then make a decision on. I'll do that. And it's the same as what Dave said one, two, three, net. All right, fantastic. If you could please get one, two, three, net to contact me. Okay, now we're on to page four, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Any uh, amendments or matters arising? All right, so item 10, approval of maintenance, repair, and replacement plan has been implemented. Um, I will report in my chairperson's report that, in fact, um, uh, one of our trustees, uh, Andy Abbey, has uh, uh, raised the issue of us but, but besides simply doing a review of our 10-year plan, uh, we need to track as trustees our 10-year plan. So now we have uh, apportioned that responsibility or assigned that responsibility to Andy Abbey. And Andy, I don't know if you want to talk about that now or, or, or later, but let's just talk about it now. As far as the 10-year maintenance plan is concerned, do you want to just update us on how we will be managing that going forward, sir? Well, what's happening at the moment is we're doing a lot of what we call special projects. Um, and quite often these special projects are not brought through into the 10 year plan. Um, and what we need to do is we need to get the two to talk to each other. The 10 year plan is supposed to reflect projects of a capital nature, projects of a higher value nature, whereas your general maintenance items are covered under repair and maintenance in the, in the normal budget. And really what we want to do is speak to the same crowd that actually did our 10 year maintenance plan and just make sure that we, we, we discuss the projects that have been completed already and get that, that whole schedule of ours updated and then obviously updated for the next 10 years. And so Andy, um, we've, we've agreed then that that review will be conducted between you and them prior to every AGM so that you can present at the AGM what we've managed to tick off on the 10 year plan and what amendments might be required to be approved. Correct. And we'll start that from next year. All right, fantastic. Thank well, you so much. This year. But for next year's AGM, yes, that's yeah, right. Absolutely. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much for that. So, in fact, we'll be in year eight next year, and that's when we'll have a report and any request for amendment. Um, thank you very much for that. So now we're on item uh, 11, the appointment of the auditors. That was done. Item 12, uh, 
we, we, uh, we, we, we had our trustees elected. I just want to inform you, ladies and gentlemen, that um, in the course of this year, we've had one resignation, and that's from Tony Lewis as a trustee. So the trustees currently are myself, Mervyn, uh, Gavin Gertz, uh, Ron Gordon, uh, Jeannie, and Donny Pretorius. Um, I'll talk about that a little more in my chairperson's report. Um, there were no lodgements made uh, amendments to the schemes rules, except to say as a matter arising, we entrusted Gavin Gertz um, uh, to convene a small uh, a subcommittee for us uh, in relation to a revision of uh, the schemes rules, our rules, um, and there is a brief report in the chairperson's report that I've included from Gavin uh, that I will refer to. Um, okay, so that's uh, page four. Any amendments or matters arising? Nothing, moving on to page five. Uh, no restrictions imposed on the trustees. Uh, there was no special business to discuss. Um, bum, 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 bum. All right, uh, good. Any uh, amendments or matters arising from that final page, which is page five? None? All right, thank you very much. Uh, those are the minutes and I shall sign them with Kogi uh, accordingly. Thank you very much. Um, all right, so, uh, so uh, as far as the chairperson's report is concerned, let me just quickly call that up. Um, I, I just want to uh, take the opportunity again to uh, thank you, uh, dear co-owners. It's been a pleasure to serve you as chairperson. Um, and very importantly, I wanted to thank David for the sterling work that he's done as our building manager. Um, it's a repeat of what I said last year, but quite frankly, he has conscientiously protected and improved our assets. Uh, and we are grateful to he and his wife for settling in the way they have settled. Um, he's dealt with a lot of extraordinary issues in the course of the last year, including two floods, water shortages, and I think he's done so with a plume. So, so David, thank you very much for what you do for us and for what you've done for us in the last year. I want to thank uh, Mervyn and I want to thank Andy for the sterling work they've done as our treasury team. Um, our finances are in decent shape uh, and they're in such good shape principally because we have two very competent people, uh, including, by the way, a third, uh, a genie, uh, who is working with Andy and Mervyn, uh, making sure um, that they find money uh, for us, uh, for example, waterproofing emergencies, fencing, where our fencing collapses uh, and needs replacing, and then continuing to uh, bolster our back slope. Uh, and I just also want to thank <laughs> Rod Stretch for the work he did when he was a trustee with us. He's still an owner, but when he was a trustee with us, he, his vision in helping us to fix up our back slope has prevented uh, umschloti, from happening at Terra Mare. If we had not done what we did under his guidance and insistence, we would now be facing an umschloti situation. And I hate to think how bad it would be given that the fixing up cost us close to one and a half million. But it was money exceptionally well spent, which has been proven by the two floods this year and the knock on wood because I don't want to tempt fate. But they've done significantly good work for us. So thank you, one and all. And again, to Rod for, for the work he did. I especially want to highlight the great work done by Donnie Pretorius and Gavin Goots as our legal panel of experts who had to be called upon on a number of occasions this year to adjudicate to different matters, um, including uh, uh, the protection of our body corporate against external litigation based on issues uh, raised by owners against other owners, and also to assist us on issues raised between individuals in the terror mayor space, and I certainly don't want to go into detail. But uh, Donnie and Gavin, two great legal minds, and they've really helped us on numerous occasions and continue as I speak to, 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 to help us. Um, I just want to mention who our trustees are and the great work that they're doing. We've got Mervyn Ganeni and Andy Abbey, our finance team. We've got Ronald Gordon, who's our insurance expert. Donnie Pretorius, who's a longstanding trustee and is a legal subject matter expert and a judge. Uh, Gavin Gertz, who is an attorney of note and uh, a great subject matter expert for us. Jeannie, our newest trustee, who's exceptionally well exposed and involved in a significant number of body corporate activities nationally. Jeannie, welcome to the team. Uh, your help has been invaluable this year. So thank you very, very much. Um, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to quickly give you a brief uh, matters to report. Um, state of the building. Well, as Mervyn said a little earlier, we are re-waterproofing 
um, our roof. We've, we've, we, we, in fact, we're just fixing up our roof because it was under guarantee. We've had no problem with the enforcement of the guarantee. So it's just being fixed up in particular areas. Uh, but our gutters and our box gutters have proven to be a matter which we're now needing to tackle. Um, uh, Dave, I just want to put an amount to it. What is the amount, uh, or rather, what is the uh, uh, tender, the quote that we've accepted and approved for those box gutters, and what is that amount, just so that everybody is aware of that? Okay. Um, I have a ballpark figure. I think it's 138,000 plus VAT. All right. Can you just tell us why those box gutters are so important in terms of the waterproofing? Well, either they, they're in between units, and what happens is that at the moment they've been covered with a, it's an epoxy coated fabric. Um, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but that's starting to lift. And what happens is the water rushing down at the angle of those gutters forces its way underneath the membrane and into the, the concrete, which is porous. And that is giving us some of the problems in the individual units where you have water coming down the, the walls between units. Okay. Um, good. So uh, we've, uh, as a body corporate, we've uh, we've approved that that work goes ahead. When will it start? That waiting for the go ahead, um, okay. just the final go ahead, and I think that'll be fairly quick. I think um, Andy has been dealing with Charles from Durban Waterproofing, and it's yeah, it's any day now. I think it's just when yeah. final final documents are signed and agreed to. Okay. Yeah, I know that's correct, um, Dave. Um, we've watched him call it. We spoke to, to Charlie yesterday. Um, okay. There was two, two additional changes we had, which he had just had to fix. And once that's okay. done, I'll send the the order placement form to, to Ivor for signature and then Koki can complete it and we can send it off to them. Okay. Hopefully it'll be done by tomorrow. Fantastic. Thank you for that. That's Hi. Good. Sorry, Ivor, can I just ask a quick question? Is that what's driving the big um, increase year on year in the 2022 budget on the painting and waterproofing line? I think there's about 250,000 set aside, which is quite a big increase on previous years. Mer is that the 130 in there or is it over no, and above? No, no it's, it's certainly not the 130 in there. Mervyn, do you want to deal with that? Uh, Andy? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the, the 250,000 is essentially for the internal painting. Right, so that's just the painting. Okay, because it's yeah. almost like double what we've done in previous years. Yes, so I was just interested to know what. Okay. Um, but I'm saying, why would we be like any other year? Why would we not be spending the 120 or thereabouts? So, so we're making, we're it's making just provision. doubled. We're yeah. making provision. Okay. We're making provision. Mm -hmm. So it's not work that will take place every single year. It's building up a kitty. My understanding. Oh, uh, okay. Building up a kitty okay. For a big, for a big paint, uh, which needs to be done in terms of our ten-year plan. Okay, makes sense if that's the case. Great. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you so much. Who was that, by the way? Uh, Belinda. Sorry, Belinda. <laughs> Didn't uh -huh. No worries. Thing. Very, All good. thank, thank you so much for that question. All right, so um, uh, colleagues, the garage now. Um, so we've completed the first two phases of our garages. The third phase is the phase of automation. Um, the body corporate will be bringing power to the last mile. That's the re uh, reference to the fact that it'll be bringing power near to every single garage. There's not currently power near to every garage. And then from there, the owners will be responsible for the last mile. It's, it's not going to be a, a, a big expense. Dave, um, what was your estimation of what, or quote, for the last mile work that needs to be done where owners elect to, uh, electrify their garages? It's eight and a half thousand, Ivor. For the electrification, 8, but that's for the 8, electrification. 8,500. But that's not for the um, power, though. Yeah, that's for the power. 858245. Eight, eight, no, but that's for all of the garages together, right? That's for the garages, yes, with, okay. with doors. And that's to bring power into them. But that's obviously the the automation is a separate cost. Right. So I just want to emphasize before people have a heart attack, we are not going to pass on to you an expense of 8,000 rand per garage for the electrification. That's the total amount of the electrification. Right, Dave? 
That's correct. Yes, yeah. Ivan. That's okay, the no, power in all of them. Thank you for that. Um, good. I, I hope no one had any attack when that was mentioned. Right. Um, our, our body corporate rules. I just want to quote what uh, Gavin Gertz has said. There is a revision of our body corporate rules to bring them in line with CSOS uh, requirements. Um, it is taking a little longer than we expected. Um, but um, just to read what Gavin writes. In view of uh, previous incidents of antisocial behavior, particularly by short-term tenants, a decision was made to embark upon a review of our conduct rules and to consider measures which can be put in place to curb any antisocial behavior. For this purpose, a subcommittee of trustees was formed. Our conduct rules are widely framed. They regulate issues such as noise and nuisance and also provide for agreements to be concluded between the trustees and owners who let their units. Over the past December period, it was arranged with our security company that the security guard carry a cell phone should anyone need to contact them to report or to assist uh, with any incident. The contact number was and is placed on the notice board uh, and copies of the conduct rules were also placed at reception. In this regard, we remind owners who let their units that tenants are to be provided with copies of our conduct rules and that such tenants must agree in writing to be bound thereby. The relevant obligations set out in our conduct rules remain that of owners and are not, for example, those, are let, are, 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 are those of any letting agencies. So I'm going to, I just want to read that again. The relevant obligations set out in our conduct rules remain that of owners and are not, for example, those of any letting agencies. So owners cannot cede to letting agencies the responsibility for the conduct of the tenants. As this process is ongoing, further measures may be developed as are provided for in our conduct rules, which will be communicated to owners. In this regard, owners are encouraged to report any incidents of antisocial behavior. It is in the interest of owners to ensure that the occupation of units and the use of common areas occur in a socially responsible manner with due regard to the rights of others. And we anticipate the rules being ready for review in a special meeting by August 2022. Um, uh, I know that Gavin did have COVID and uh, is recovering. And so I hope he, uh, I hope he recovers <clears throat> speedily. Um, Iva, yeah. sorry, yeah. Belinda again. I Hello, left a, Belinda. A, I left a, a note in the chat. Okay. Um, how was that special subcommittee um, chosen? It's a subcommittee um, of the trustees. It's a subcommittee con, uh, constituted by trustees. Okay, and then just out of interest, is there representation of um, owner owner renters and residents on there, or is it only res permanent residents on that group? Uh, well, it's not permanent residents. So at this stage, it's only owners who are trustees. However, uh, it is now being supplemented by Belinda. Thank you so much for joining that committee, Belinda. <laughs> we really appreciate that. Uh, Kogi, if we can just make a note of that and get that to Gavin. I uh, certainly, sorry, I certainly wasn't volunteering myself. I just wanted to understand how that committee was formed. So Belinda... Um, so it is a genuine question because no, no, so we're not marking that. our own homework here. Yeah. No, no, 100%. <laughs> uh, well, let, let me also say that we have um, the work is being facilitated and professionally consulted by uh, uh, Paddocks. I don't know if you know Paddocks, but they are, um, let's call it the uh, Alpha and Omega of body corporate uh, uh, regulations. Um, okay. And so they are, Gavin has um, consulted them, or rather Gavin has commissioned them to oversee the rewriting of our rules and regulations in line with CSOS requirements. Okay, and then just to don't want to misrepresent my views on this, I can imagine it's an absolute misery for folk that are living there permanently to put up with this. So um, I'm an, we were an owner renter. So <laughs> that's why I'm asking all of these questions and certainly not going to be, um, don't intend to be um, a hurdle in this or, uh, you know, stopping anything from going ahead. Absolutely. I just want to know that it's done in a very open way. Linda, can um, I say this get to a you? Say in it. Yeah. There, there, is a, there is a paranoia that mm -hmm. um, that has arisen over the last couple of years that we are on a mission to ban short-term letting. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I need to stipulate that that is not the case, but we are on a mission to control short-term letting and the consequential damage which is done regularly uh, because of mm. short-term lets, um, Get not, it. Yeah. not only within units, but importantly within our common areas as well. And critically importantly, in relationships with our staff, those short-term tenants in their relationships with our staff. So those are totally the areas get that. where we are Thanks. focused and supportive. on Absolutely supportive. Thanks.
No, thank you so much for the question. And Belinda, I was being flippant, but not so. No, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That. If you if you do need some extra uh, help on it, I will. <laughs> thank you so much. I really appreciate that. No worries. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Belinda. All right. So I'm I'm not going to belabor the issue of short term letting, except to say we've had another another year of of uh, concerning events. Um, Dave, I I think you might agree that not to the frequency of the previous year. But certainly we have had some incidents this year that we've had to deal with. I've had, uh, this definitely hasn't been as bad as previously. This year is, has been a lot better. It really and truly has. All right. Good. Thank you so much for that. All right. Um, I have discussed our 10-year plan as Andy has, so I'm not going to belabor that point. However, point number five is critically important. And again, I thank uh, Andy for bringing this to the trustees' attention. We were unaware of the fact that two Fridays ago, correct me if I'm wrong, Andy, but two Fridays ago was the deadline for all body corporates to have developed a plan uh, for the management of asbestos in our buildings. Um, and we missed that deadline because we were unaware of the deadline. Um, but I'm very happy to say that Andy did bring it to our attention. We got onto it straight away, or Andy got onto it straight away for us, finding um, uh, three companies that issued us with quotes um, for the development of a plan and for the actual implementation of that plan and management of asbestos uh, in the building. We do have asbestos uh, over our garages. Uh, there is an investigation currently underway because um, there were a couple of trustees who were under the impression that potentially we also had asbestos in our uh, communal air conditioning ducting, but uh, uh, I believe that's proven uh, and not true, which is a, a great relief. Um, uh, Kurbis, you might know better than I would in terms of asbestos in the building, and possibly you might wish to assist Andy in this endeavor. But nevertheless, um, we have to deal with asbestos, at least the asbestos over our garages. Um, and Mervyn, I think you'd agree that we thought we could simply control it uh, uh, with the work that's been done. But the new rules on asbestos make it absolutely impossible for us to ignore the fact that we have a hazardous sub substance on the premises that over time we need to deal with and we need to get rid of. Um, and importantly, Andy is now working on a plan uh, with an agency uh, to in fact do that work with and for us. Andy, what is the time frame on replacing the asbestos wherever we find it? No, that, that's part of the first phase, um, Ivo. What happens is this, this is the asbestos abatement regulation of 2020 that we're talking about. But what happens is you, you bring in these appointed inspection authorities um, and we, we're contracting a specific company now and they will come in and they will do an inventory first of all and find out where we've got asbestos and then they will prepare a risk assessment. They will send away samples of the asbestos to see what type of asbestos it is and then they'll come back and tell us you know, what, what the inventory is and what the risk is. From there, we will prepare a, um, a, a plan but they tell me that um, in, a, in a residence like ourselves, like we've got, um, it is not normally required to replace the asbestos. What happens is you've just got to inspect it on a regular basis, something like every second year, and make sure that it's solid and intact and there's no cracks and there's no um, um, breakages or anything like that. And, and as long as you keep it like that, they, you know, it's fine. Um, they don't insist that you take everything down and get rid of it, because if you do, that's a very, very expensive operation. You've All got right. to seal everything and you've got to do it. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a major task. Um, right. But he says they've, you know, they've done quite a few um, um, multi-story buildings where asbestos was present, and most of them, they just do a monitoring program every second year. Okay. I do, um, I do just want to point out um, the second last paragraph on the page in front of you. And Don, this, this might relate to you or might not relate to you. But um, uh, what has been pointed out is that, I just want to readmit, okay. What has been pointed out is that in the interim, should units be sold, it is incumbent on owners to point out this re uh, residual risk to new owners and indicate that owners will need to share at the time, if necessary, in the cost of replacement and remediation. So that's a consequential risk arising from this problem that would need to be disclosed uh, during a sales agreements. However, because it is very limited, our asbestos exposure at this stage is very limited, we do not believe it's going to be an inordinate cost to each owner in the building. 
Andy, anything more you want to say about that or can I move on? No, I just, you know, it's just important to recognize that it's the Property Practitioners Act um, of 22 that, that says that um, if you've got asbestos, it will be seen as a defect and you've got to declare a defect if you want to sell the unit. Okay. Um, but obviously what a person wants is the proper risk assessment where you can say, what is the risk associated with that, that defect? And it might cost nobody anything other than doing this examination, which we're doing at the moment, but repeat it every two years. Um, once you've done the inventory, you've got the inventory. Then a person must just check the condition every second year. Okay. Please tell me that our consultant is not an ex-politician. No, he's not. It's a, it's a <laughs> inspection authority that, <laughs> that works with their best as all day, every day. They, they, they know the business. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I'm pleased you mean when you say ex-politician. <laughs> <laughs> Ace up our sleeves. I'm pleased yeah, to report yeah. that uh, while units at Terra Mare are regularly on the market, they're generally sold within a short time period. Owners are receiving offers in line with market trends. And it's a testimony to what is the value of owning a Terra Mare, uh, where we have fewer units on a large expense of property relative to other buildings in Umschlange. Colleagues, it, it was for that reason why previously it wasn't terribly difficult to find a developer who was interested in playing with us at the time that we were talking about the redevelopment of the building, because we apparently have the largest um, undeveloped or underdeveloped footprint in Umschlange, uh, according to uh, developers, um, it, it is a pretty attractive option. So thank you to Dave for what you're doing in helping us preserve that asset. And to uh, Mervyn and Andy in particular for helping us preserve the finances of the building so that we can preserve that uh, asset. I want to thank Kogi and Steve of Atlee Agencies for the manner in which they're managing our property and the stability which they bring to our management activity and to everybody um, uh, for your support of your trustees in the last year. And we look forward to being of continued service to you should you wish in the years to come. But thank you very much. And if there are no questions, I'd like to move on uh, with the agenda. Uh, I'm sorry, but I can't quite hear you so lucky because I'm in a different place, yeah? Right, Jerry. Were you, were you mentioning something about the building again? Like no, maybe no. We, we'll deal with it under general. But what I did say is that it's because of the, the state of our property and the size of our property that developers are generally interested in talking to us about the options of redeveloping our property should we ever wish to do it. It is attractive, uh, particularly because we literally have our own beach across the road. So... I, I was just yeah. raising yeah, that. Fully understand. Yeah. Sorry, I just didn't hear you. I got lost there with you. But okay. No, sure, sure. All right. Um, Celeste, I hope that's water. There's something in the room. No, it's red uh, wine. Okay. Need it. <laughs> Need it, yeah. But <laughs> come this time. All right. Uh, item number six, audited financial statements. Uh, Mervyn, over to you. Mervyn, are you there? Yeah, sorry. So rather, look, they've been circulated It's, it's a, uh, and audited and signed off. So basically, if there are any questions, myself and Andy can try and help you. All right. Any questions arising from the audited financial statements which were circulated? Other than the fact that you'll see that uh, the, there was a, a loss or a deficit for the year of 764000 but that was because uh, in the main, it went into, we spent money on the retaining wall at the back of the building. And that came out of uh, accumulated funds uh, that we had. So we never uh, increased or the levies, et cetera, to cover the, that huge cost of the back embankment. So if you're wondering why we've got such a loss, it was self-funded. Any other questions about uh, our financial statements, ladies and gentlemen? Is that, is that uh, where the uh, cash reduced from 1.4 to 673? Yeah, that's correct. Yep, we used the, the funds to pay for the back embankment. Okay, so that's it. if you look at that item, cash and cash equivalents, that million rand reduction or in just under million rand reduction was in fact utilized for that purpose to fund uh, the work we needed to have done on the back embankment. Okay, uh, any other questions arising from this report? Our reserves, do you want to address our reserves, Mervyn? 
So basically, as of today, we've got 600,000 in our call account and 369,000 in the check account. So we've got nearly a million, but then out of the check account, we still got our monthly expenses to go off. So it is down low, that 600, um, you know, especially with a lot of these things coming up. Um, although we have in the 2022 budgeted, you know, Belinda asked the question, there's painting and waterproofing. We might not get around to the painting with the 250, but we're definitely going to be using at least 140,000 just to um, waterproof the channels, the gutter channels. Okay. Um, but we've got that money sufficient not to necessarily raise a special levy. Uh, you, yes, that we, we've put that in the budget for this year to okay. cover the waterproofing. All right. Um, but then we've got the, the salamander wall and we've got, if we want to complete the, the back embankment, which I think is going to be quite necessary, um, we might have to raise a little bit more. I'm not quite sure. We don't have any quotes yet because we don't really know what we need to do in terms of completing the back embankment. All right. So we'll... Look, we do anticipate that there will be August, September time, possibly a special meeting dealing specifically with the rules, but we could then extend that meeting to also deal with any, any special levies should the work be done by that time in terms of the, 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 the business plan of that work. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, anything arising, any questions you want to address? Or can we move on? All right. Good. I'm going to uh, then regard this matter as having been dealt with. Um, Sorry, Ivor. Yes, yes, Andy. Can I can I just mention um, the the 199 rand which we show as a surplus for this year? This is the minimum amount of money that must be put into the maintenance reserve, um, based on the calculations that we you know that we obliged to 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 commit to um, in terms of the legal requirements, and we fall under category C. And we've got to have um, 200,000 rand that we've got to put back into the maintenance reserve. So we have to replenish the maintenance reserve by another 200,000. Yeah, what, what we've got to show over here is that we've got a, we've got a budget which shows a, um, a surplus of 199,000 rand. But that is required because we've got to put money into the maintenance reserve. Okay. The and maintenance that, reserve, you've got to calculate the money put into the maintenance reserve, you've got to calculate on an annual basis. And that's being um, done, Mervyn? Yes, we have been doing that, Ivor. Okay, fantastic. Thanks, Coach. All right. Um, uh, so, Mervyn, you, uh, could you move to uh, the approval of the budget now, item seven? Okay, so as you can see, we in the budget, we, we need to be increasing only by 7% only, which I think is uh, it's reasonable. Uh, I would have liked to have seen it a little bit high uh, in terms of inflation at the moment. Um, what else of interest was there? It just everything else is pretty much standard. Uh, and then, as Andy has pointed out, we have to make that surplus of two hundred thousand because it's a percentage of your your levies that have that has to be put away. So I'm hoping uh, it is being put away, and I'm hoping that within this budget, that we will um, the box gutters or channels as you call them will be covered and done well it is we are we're going ahead i mean andy yeah. is just uh, getting the guy to change the wording of his uh, warranty um and then we we are going ahead because that has to take place i mean we, we don't have a choice on certain things uh it's the box gutters we don't have a choice and the back embankment which i, I think as soon as we can get um who did you ask um, to do the back embankment? It was um, it's MG? I think MGM is the company's name. Yeah, yeah. Them. I think we'll have MCM. to approach them again. MCM. Yeah. Yeah, I think we will. I think what we should do is approach them again now, just to finish off the the back embankment. Right. There is a small section. It's not. It's not a big section at the back. But then, if we want to go down the side of the building. That's a, that's another story on its own. 
Celeste, could I just, uh, as I said in the beginning, could I just ask you to appeal to Rod to uh, contact Mervyn so that we can uh, utilize his services as well, again, uh, well, because, he, uh, because of the sterling job he did for us previously. Um, I wonder if I can ask you, Mervyn, moving forward, under sundry income, um, if we could change that, that second item under sundry S, uh, income to a domestic workers room, uh, uh, as opposed to the way it's currently labeled, that could be useful. Well, that, that must be necessary. So mm. please, if you could just change that. Um, good. Uh, excellent. Any other matters arising from expenses or questions? Sorry, can I just say that we've only increased the levies by 5% from January? Not 7%. Not 7 We initially did it from as 5 um, Do we need to recover the 2%? Yes, we do. Otherwise, we're not going to um, <clears throat> reach our target of the 200. Okay, so and we're going to backdate it from... It, yeah, you'll have to backdate it as well. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, good. Moving on then. So um, we've, we've basically got the budget proposed. It will be 7% increase. Um, can I have a move in, mover and a seconder for the approval of the budget, please? Thanks. I'm happy to approve. Thanks, Jeannie, and seconded by Clifford. Thank you so much, Clifford. Appreciate that. Right, moving on. Um, right, approval with or without amendment of the schedule of replacement value of units. Uh, Mervyn, have we had an amendment to that schedule of replacement, uh, or is it the same as last year? No, that's what we discussed in terms of the insurance. Um, At 99 million. No, yes, but it's uh, it's gone up at the ten percent. So as as we stand today, we covered for one hundred and nine million. Okay, good. Uh, but it's basically exactly as it was last. Exactly year. the same. Yeah, yeah. Right. Nothing's changed. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, item number nine: determine the extent of the following insurance, public liability insurance, insurance to cover the risk of loss. Again, it's simply the increase from uh, what we accepted last year. And it was the increase was built into what was accepted last year. So it's automatic. Mervyn? Yeah, we're still sitting at uh, 100 million liability. All right, fantastic. I see Ron is joining us now. Um, welcome, Ron. If you can hear us, welcome. Um, the maintenance, repair, and replacement plan has been implemented. We've, we've had a lot from Andy on that. Uh, Andy will be bringing our 10-year um, plan review to the next AGM for uh, ratification and for amendment. Um, uh, as far as our maintenance plan is concerned, that's not part of the 10-year plan. As Andy mentioned, Mervyn, that is separate to the 10-year plan. It's the ongoing maintenance plan. Is there anything in that plan that we need to be aware of? Besides the painting, 2023, if you look in that plan, we've got a, nearly a million rand allocated for the painting of the building. And uh, do we have, the, uh, how far are we from having raised yeah. that, that amount? This is, this is a doctor, she says. About, we're only halfway. <laughs> only halfway, but, but we have another year to go. About 23, right? we, we are going to be short because we go, we, we're currently using our existing funds for the box gutters. Um, so 400 yeah, we're probably only going to be halfway, so we might have to raise a special levy next year uh, oh, if we do external and internal painting. Or stretch the work over two years. Yeah, yeah. If we stretch it over two years, we'll get away with it. Okay, good. All right. Um, appointment of the auditors. Um, Mervyn, do you want to deal with that? Uh, we, we're just uh, reappointing the, the current auditors. We, we, we did get a quote from somebody else uh, and the current guys are the most competitive and they've been doing it for years on end. We've got no issues. All right. So uh, we just uh, can reappoint we, uh, them every year. All right. Uh, can we just have a mover and a seconder for that? Ron, I'm just going to mute you um, just because we've got some feedback. And uh, if you want to talk, you can just unmute yourself. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, can I ask, uh, can we have a mover and a seconder for the appointment of our auditor? Cannot, cannot. Mover and a seconder for the appointment of our auditors? Yeah, I, I, I propose current Thank auditors. Thank proposes. 
second that? I second that. Sorry, who was that? Quibus will second. Oh, thank you so much, Quibus. Appreciate that. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have, uh, in terms of item 12.1, we currently have seven trustees. All of those seven trustees have indicated their willingness to remain on as trustees. Um, we uh, are very comfortable in uh, having at least an eighth trustee. Uh, we did have eight trustees uh, during the course of this year. As I mentioned at the beginning, though, we did lose one of those trustees. Um, however, should any nomination be forthcoming uh, for additional trustees, we'll be only too happy to entertain such nomination. Is there anybody who would wish to nominate or, in fact, be uh, 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 nominated as a trustee? over and above the existing seven? Yeah, I'm proposing Leanne Solosh. All right, Leanne Solosh has been nominated as an eighth trustee. Uh, is there uh, anybody else for that eighth trustee uh, position? Okay. Um, is there any objection to the election of Leanne Solosh as our eighth trustee? Clifford Solosh has objected to his wife being nominated as the eighth trustee. She's <laughs> objected herself. <laughs> right. Leanne, are you happy to be our eighth trustee? No, I'm not. Sorry. Okay, okay good. Uh, well, well, then I'll let's appoint Clifford. Job there, uh, Sorry, who was that? I think Leanne will do a fantastic job. And thanks, Jerry. Jerry should know she's been driving him nuts. <laughs> All right, no, but seriously, guys. Oh, no, the job fantastic. Uh, look, we, we don't necessarily have to determine it now, but uh, if uh, either Clifford, yourself, or Leanne do wish to be our eighth trustee, please just let us know, and we'll do a round robin amongst owners. Will do. All right. Thank you very much. Um, all right. Uh, Kogi, from your perspective, uh, the lodgement of amendments, we don't currently have amendments to the schemes rules. That's what Gavin's working on. Uh, so I take it uh, uh, item 13 has nothing to report. Yes, that's correct. Uh, item 14 has not changed, the domicilium setandi et executandi, uh, so nothing has changed there. Um, and there, our offices. Right, and there are no restrictions which have been imposed or, in fact, which have been requested. Am I right in saying that? Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, so as far as item 17, there's no special business. So item 17 are the general items. We have noted seven general items. So I, I want to start with, um, I want to say that we've dispensed with item 17.7, which is the general painting of interior exterior. Unless Mervyn, there is anything you want to add to that, sir? No, nothing. It's just All that right. uh, we have made provision for it and we're going to have to do it. All right, item 17.6, the common boundary wall. Well, uh, 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 colleagues, uh, as you know, we have approved, as your trustees, we have approved the erection or rather fixing up the boundary wall, which runs from our front gate. If you're looking at um, a Terra Mer, the left-hand side uh, of our boundary wall, which, is, uh, which has e e um, significantly deteriorated to the extent that there are massive gaps in that wall. The concrete has uh, cracked um, and uh, it's a massive security hazard. In fact, it was pointed out to us by our security company that we had to do something about it and by our insurance company. And so as a result, we have approved fencing, which will be erected. It's the clear view fencing as per a memorandum which was circulated, the proposal which was circulated to owners previously uh, in the earlier part of this year. Um, and um, Mervyn, you wanted to talk to that, uh, item 17.6. No, just the fact that we need to uh, approach Salamander and see if they're willing to go 50-50. All right. So um, I have uh, begun to approach Salamander. Salamander has, in fact, been sold from the group which previously owned it. It is now sectional title ownership. Um, I've had a certain amount of uh, difficulty in contacting the chairperson. I will work with Dave on making contact uh, with the rest of the committee at Salamander, the rest of the body corporate at Salamander. They previously, but this is when it was owned by um, a corporate, 
uh, did kick in, I think, at that stage with 50,000 Rand for the top side or the top part of that wall. Uh, but it is now a different group and a different management uh, uh, group. So uh, I anticipate that we will not necessarily receive resistance from them, but the process will take slightly longer. Um, but we will try and recover at least 50% of the cost of that boundary wall or that portion of the boundary wall that we are beginning to replace um, the corroded uh, elements with. Is that sufficient for you, Mervyn? Yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I, have a, I would like to endorse that. I think it's important, you know, whether they are uh, sectional title or uh, owners, I think they must have money and they must, but share that. Thank yeah. you. You see, Ginny, uh, the, the part of the problem is that our wall is relatively high up on their property and inside their property. So whereas it presents a threat to us, uh, of people coming from their property and through to our property, um, the, the, the impact on them is negligible. In other words, it's very unlikely that people will climb through from our side of the wall to their property um, and uh, you know, commit malfeasance. Um, but uh, we certainly are going to try and uh, uh, recover some of the cost of that boundary wall because it is a boundary wall bordering both properties. Um, we have discussed the box gutter, 17.5. Mervyn, do you want to talk about 17.4? The Not you, uh, uh, whoever put uh, metering uh, the water uh, unit. I think that was yourself, Clifford. Do you want to address that, sir? Metering of water? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, everybody should be responsible for their own water. I mean, I come down for, uh, you know, a few weeks of the year and I'm paying, uh, you know, one thirty fourth of all the water in the whole building, whereas people are renting out the building, uh, renting out their property and uh, we're paying their, their, their share of it. I don't think that's fair. And I agree. And it's something, you know, we did table. And we were going to do some work around. I don't think, you know, we paid a lot of attention to it, but I must agree with you, Clifford. You know, like most of us, we are hardly there. Maximum, we could be there a month in the entire year. And, uh, and I, I think it'll just pay for everybody to, to look at that. So Dave, um, Dave, you did investigate okay. that with, um, uh, with Tony and you did get companies into quote, right? Um, I've a Tony actually investigated and had a company here, but the way we've actually got our water lines running, it would mean basically take all the lines run between the bathrooms, your, your main bedroom bathroom and your, your back bathroom. So it would mean teeing into the water there bringing it outside to a meter that would be easily read and then going back into the into the main line again so that's the the people we only had one person come and give us a, a quick rundown and they didn't even quote on it because they said it would be hugely expensive do we have and an idea we, of what hugely expensive means uh consequences you'd have to each unit would have to basically that, that you'd have to chop into the walls to get there but I, but I, I think you know we do, i did this exercise probably five years ago and they had some electronic devices that could be put on that would measure the water uh, I, want, I think you know we need to maybe uh, follow up on that did someone want to can say I, something there can i mention something there please yes please um i've bought the place up in cape town I'll find out from them because we've got no tap in the walls, the special meters and all that type of stuff. Um, but I'll clarify it. I'll see if I can get some clarification tomorrow on it. It's like a prepaid thing where you actually go online and you put some funds to that water stuff. To that like water bill and that type of whatever, whatever. <clears throat> all right, I can so get some more information. I can get some more information if you like on that. Uh, please do. And then if you could maybe um, channel it through Clifford and then Clifford, you could just uh, distill the document for us so that we have uh, some kind of proposal to consider. Thank you so much. As the person who raised uh, uh, either, sorry, either yeah. the, the Cape Town companies don't operate in the Mshlanga. That's the problem. I think there are two of them. Uh, one I spoke to, one somebody else spoke to. They don't operate in Cape Town. 
and the easy, cheap method is not available to us. So you're saying there is no solution in, in Durban, Ron? Sorry? Are you saying there is no, that solution doesn't exist, in, isn't open? That, yeah, that, that's, that's what I discovered last year. That solution wasn't available to us. Jerry? Yes. You wanted to say something? No, it was just a thought. I didn't know that it doesn't work up in Durban. I thought maybe it works through the municipalities and that, and I thought it would be some, something very similar. Celeste, are you aware of anything from the municipal perspective? Not at all. Beyond my scope, I have sorry, can't help. Can't, can't or won't? Right. <laughs> no, I really I know nothing about that side of things. I'm a planner. Okay. I'm a planner. Okay. All right. Um, look, Jerry, it would be worth your while just doing the investigation and asking uh, them if they know any reciprocal companies. I know Ron has said he has tried on his side, but who knows? There might be something. If you could please just investigate it for us, I'd appreciate that. I have a, my brother actually owns a property company. I'll give him a call tomorrow. I actually didn't think about it. because uh, I know he does meter all his flats, so uh, I'll give him a shout. And I know he's got a building down in Durban as well. Thanks, Cliff. Appreciate that. All right, okay. Cliff. While we're with you, uh, you've raised the issue as well of electricity and possibly a generator. No, that wasn't from me. Oh, that was Mervyn. Mervyn? Yeah, I'm just thinking uh, again, well, whether it's there's a necessity to have it just to run emergency lights. Um, because I think the state of uh, the electricity is not going to come right for the next decade. Um, whether we should have an emergency generator to run uh, the lights in all the passages. Um, there are cheaper alternatives where, I don't know if you know, but you buy these, these light bulbs that um, when the electricity goes off, they switch on themselves. So Mervyn, um, um, we discussed this previously. Now, Dave and Tony, again, we're going to investigate that option. Dave, how far did that go? Um, I've, I have replaced where I can with the emergency light bulbs. Um, we've got a lot in the car park outside. We've got some in the main entrance area and going up in the, the, uh, the, the stairwell. A lot of our light fittings don't actually accommodate the globe, though. The globe is too big to go into quite a few light fittings, so we... We need to look at changing light fittings if we want the, the emergency globes put in. And those normally last for about two, two and a half hours. All right. Um, um, yes. Sorry, I'm convinced we, we need an inverter. Um, we've used these inverters in a couple of buildings. They, they work extremely well. They keep the lift going. They keep all the common lighting going. They keep the gates and the garage doors going. And the, uh, the ongoing cost is change of batteries probably every couple of years. Yeah, I'm going to agree third, that solar is, a, solar is a better option than the generator. And it's a sunny um, Umschlange. So I could see, you know, we're looking at the solar batteries and um, inverters, and that should work. Initially, we start small, and then we can we increase the capacity. So Cliff, I see you have put an inverter in your unit. Um, well, look, I'm, 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 a, I'm a, I'm a believer one, in, in the inverter. Look at these arcs. I'm already one step ahead of them. Sorry, <laughs> say that again, Jerry. <laughs> look, he's smiling there because he's saying I'm already one step ahead of them. Mine's installed already. <laughs> so why don't we consider installing for the rest of us, Jerry? Ah, that was Clippy's own expense. Eh? <laughs> well, we're, right, guys, we're happy to look at we, we can. I can get you the quote. It's not a problem. All right. I look, think I'm, a, I'm a firm believer in the inverter. I've done, uh, I, I put an inverter in my house. That's why I put it in Durban yeah, and it works so brilliantly. Too. I mean, it keeps my whole house running for about 10 hours. So, yeah, guys, look, well. it's, it's very much about whether or not we have a lithium battery and it's about. The question is whether or not we need an eight or a five KVA, nothing else really at the end of the day. Um, so Jerry, is it possible for you to get us a quote on let's say a five KVA to start off? Because I don't believe we're gonna need anything bigger than that. Um, uh, and possibly, uh, you know, um, I suppose a, fire, a, a, 
a five, if not a ten. I don't know if we need a ten kilowatt. A battery. ten, a ten. If, if you want to run the, I would the say lift, a ten. Yes, I would say a ten because we just installed at home, and I thought a five kb will work. But a ten kb will work better. All right. So I think Jerry, if you could possibly get us a quote then. Um, and then uh, work through Dave, and Dave will obviously need two alternative quotes to that quote uh, for a 5 kVA inverter and a 10 kilowatt battery. Uh, yes, no, that's, that's far now, uh, but uh, Sarkis is sitting there next to me, and he also knows about his inverters, and Cliffy as well, very well done, Cliffy, on your inverter. Uh, but it's according to Sarkis, his 5 kVA that he put in at his, at his home now in Johannesburg was around about what, 75, 75 to the 80 mark. And that's with battery? That's with the batteries. Lithium, lithium batteries. How many batteries? One, one lithium battery. So the 10, the 10 kW uh, lithium battery has a 10-year guarantee, which is very useful as well. I, I don't um, know if I, it's I, different. I, I, would, uh, I would consider looking at the gel batteries. They're about a quarter of the price, and they last a hell of a long time as well. All right. Um, look, if we can look at the options. Jerry, if I can ask you to maybe head that up for us. Let us look at the options and let us look at competing quotes and then make an informed decision down the line. No problem. I can do that. I'll ask the few to actually also assist me with that one, but I'll contact him privately tomorrow. Fantastic. And look, I mean, I'm sure Clifford might not mind us, at least for the next couple of years, just wiring into his board because if the inverter's there already and he's got a 10 kW battery, he's never in the building, so it makes no difference and Leanne doesn't mind. All right. I don't, I don't charge much. Oh, yeah. so All right. 17.2, which is the borehole. Uh, Mervyn, this was your point. Again, it's like the electricity. Water is going to be the next issue. Uh, I live in a complex where we have, they put in a borehole and it's fantastic. Uh, with with um, uh, filters, with the filtration system. So basically, the entire complex is virtually off the grid in terms of water. Um, yeah, there is costs, and especially then, um, it's a, there, there is a monthly maintenance cost. And yeah, I reckon the the, the tab on that's probably about one hundred and fifty thousand. So let's do the borehole and the 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 um, inverter issue together, because my experience, I have a borehole and inverter, and I can tell you that if you're borehole is not on your inverter, you have a major problem in a power failure. Yeah. So uh, I think they need to be looked at together. And so, um, uh, Dave, if you could then piggyback on this discussion that Jerry will be spearheading as far as the inverter is concerned and come in with a discussion on the borehole, it could help us out dramatically the next time we look okay. at this proposal. Mm -hmm. Jeannie, I know this was a, a pet peeve of yours a couple of months ago when we were talking <laughs> about the JoJo tank. And I think we need to do it sooner rather than later because Celeste, I would imagine you would agree that at least in the interim, in the short term, water is going to be a problem uh, in, in, in the KZN area. 100%. And in fact, in long term, not only short term. All right. So look, we, need we know we need to take precautions. Um, uh, I'm glad we've got a stretch involved again because the last time we took precautions was at the insistence of a stretch and it certainly saved us a huge amount of inconvenience and expense. So, um, uh, Jerry, if you and Dave can work together on that. And Celeste, if I could ask you to pass your eye over whatever is eventually proposed, that could be very useful. Sure. Thank okay. you so much, guys. All right, so now we come to item 17.1 which is the item that Jerry did raise, which was the idea that about four years ago or five years ago, uh, the proposal was that we look at the redevelopment of the building. We got a developer involved. There was a rendering. There was a proposal. There was a plan. The plan involved um, raising the building to the ground and built, putting up a building with about 100 or so units, um, accommodating owners uh, for, I think it was 10 weeks of the year, um, during the course of the development, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that plan was um, voted down. Uh, we needed 100% of owners to agree. It was voted down by a group of owners. 
uh, and this was about four years ago. The plan was done five years ago, and the, the voting was done about four years ago. I, I know that Jerry has now re-raised the issue, and I just wanted to know what the appetite was uh, on the basis of what Jerry raised, what the appetite is amongst us as owners for potentially asking the developers to have a second bite at the cherry with us. Jerry, do you want to talk to it? Yeah, then obviously, uh, and we've been in the building for a couple of days, right? We're going to be getting uh, since last uh, August, September, we've been some renovation And as you go through the buildings, you can see that the, the wall, the structural slabs on the wall, where you're going to waterproof the gullies now, they're actually from all the water, they're actually damaged. Also, most of the walls in the building are cracked. The water is in those walls, seeping in the wall. And through it seeping in the walls, it's the reinforcement that's in the slabs that's holding the building floors up. So once that, once that gets to become a big concern, we will have to get a in the middle. And like, I mean, I've done about the night to fix the bourbon wall there. So I just take it in the whole of the building and it's constant. And concrete work out of walls and you do it when that's how much damage was inside his wall. All right. So, walls on the outside. Okay, so Jerry, it's, it's, your, your line is quite bad, but I think we're all getting the gist of what you're saying, which is that because of the, how the building was built initially, we've got major damage in the structural integrity of the building. Uh, particularly in the walls of the building because of seepage and because of um, what you're describing as, uh, as, uh, as damage to the walls. Um, so I, I just want to know, do, guys, do we, do we um, re-engage with the developers um, and ask them to talk to us uh, again uh, or... Um, do we look at this as a project uh, which is not a priority or is a priority? I'm, I literally just want your input. Uh, I, would, I would personally say it's going to become a priority very, very soon. But, but the developers must also know if they develop, we've got people that's now spent like over a million, the point two, a million point three to renovate their properties. So these guys need to give them, if they do develop, I'm uh, sorry, but I have to bring it up. If they do develop, they have to give these these specific people that are spending over a million to a million and a half on a unit to renovate it, they put in the top and the best finishing and all that type of stuff, the same unit back. So they've got to get that same value inside. Mm. I, I would personally think we look at this as a long-term project because that's going to be something everybody's going to have to get their minds around. Because I think some people have done more work than others. And, you know, how do you then distribute? And it's a block of maybe 40 units. And now we are proposing 100. And how is that going to work? So I think until we get our minds around that and get the buy-in of, a hundred percent. I think it's pointless going and getting someone to look at. That's my personal opinion. Thanks, Jeannie. Um, I think you're completely correct. And we, we found this the last time that there were just literally some owners who, who were not prepared to engage on the plan. Um, all right. So let me see do the this. problem. The problem is I, I think personally, the guys at short term letting, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know this for fact, but it's just my opinion. The short term letters or the guys, that's taking it as in income and not interested in dropping the building. Therefore, the rest of us people lose a substantial amount of value to what this building could be worth. We could go from a two and a half million rand, three million rand property or renovate it, what a three and a half up to a six million rand property, seven million rand property. The potential's there. We've got the best access. We've got right across the road from the beach. We've got sea views. I mean, what more do you want? You got a six, seven, eight billion rand property once it's developed. I'm in full agreement with that. And for owners who have spent a lot of money recently, uh, like one uh, unit in particular, there's a way of taking care of that. There is a valuation. That valuation is uh, applied to perhaps the average value of the apartments. And uh, the developers have got to work their way around it. 
and they've got to put in extras and bits and pieces or, or, or PC items to the value of X for an owner like that. Problem solved. And Jeannie, it is a very long-term project anyway. So the earlier one begins this, the, uh, uh, the better, because it's going to take four or five years before this thing comes about. And that's pretty long term for me. So colleagues, I think that what I'm going to do is, uh, instead of belaboring the point, I'll put a sp small working group together. We'll meet with the developers and we'll begin the conversation and we'll report back to owners on a regular basis and bring it to some kind of point by the next AGM on feasibility or not feasibility. It might be at a stage now, previously it was palatable, but is no longer palatable, or maybe it's more palatable, um, given the development going on in Umshlanga. Um, but we don't know until we chat to developers. And I think chatting to more than one developer could be very useful for us. So if, you, if you're prepared to leave it with myself, um, uh, Ron, I know you've worked on a couple of these kinds of projects before. So if I could ask you to possibly work with myself uh, in, in dealing with developers, putting developers before, let's say, the trustees, and then taking it further, it could be a progression which is, is worth seeking out, if you're prepared to work with me on that, Ron. No, I certainly am, but I, I must warn you, I, uh, I move around a lot, and uh, that's part of the problem uh, for me to participate in anything on, a, on an ongoing basis. Very difficult. Okay. Um, but I'll certainly come to the party where I can. All right. Guys, thank Ivo, you. Yes. Sorry, Ivo, I just want to say from my side, um, you know, I, I recall the meetings that we had, and we had numerous meetings where we discussed these um, developments last time around, and it took a lot of our time. Yes. Um, and at the last meeting, we said, listen, this is something that, you know, the, the people, were, you certainly weren't going to get 100% buy-in, and it was, it was said that we're going we're gonna to put this off. Um, we said we might visit it in the future. But I, I would imagine that there's still a lot of people who would be dead against it. Yeah. And I, I just want to voice my opinion. I hear you completely. All right. We'll, we'll have to also talk to owners and poll owners on, on palatability. I think, though, that what owners are seeing, and we knew this would happen, is that the cost of patching Terra Mare is becoming more and more onerous. You know, it's likely that after we've done the box gutters, we will discover other problems in the building. Dave, I know that you recently had an altercation with an owner specifically because of what you were discovering between the building units, uh, affecting units bordering those, those, those joins. And uh, those kinds of problems are not going to disappear. So we know we've got waterproofing problems. We know we've got problems between the, 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 the components that make up the building complex. Um, and it might be that owners now are seeing the, the, the need to continuously finance the patching up of terra mare uh, that is going on as, as prohibitory and expensive and unaffordable. So it might be, Andy, that in fact the opposite is true, that owners might be more willing now than previously they were or not. Um, but it's, I suppose it's worth polling them again on that issue before we go too far with a plan of this nature. Uh, can I just mention as well, sorry, um, today uh, they've got out the water leak detector people to come and do their dye testing and all that type of stuff to just see where we've got a couple of leaks in it. And according to the guys, having a chat with him today, the guy that's doing the testing and which the, Dave can confirm with him tomorrow what he discussed with me, according to him, even the, the structural building walls are full of cracks. Hmm. The water's been through all the walls on the top, through the cracks. There is a serious problem. And I would appreciate it if one of you could chat with these people to get the, to clarify with what I'm telling you guys. The, according to him, this, this building's not going to last much longer with all those cracks. Really? Look, I don't want to be, I don't want to be an alarmist, but if you would have spoken to anybody, let's say five years ago about the same sort of problems that one or two of the buildings in Mshloti were having uh, yeah. and saying, look, this is very serious. Doomsday is about to happen. You would have been laughed uh, uh, out of the room. And let me tell you, that our building in, is, is showing the kinds of, uh, uh, of problems, which I think are in many ways similar to early problems in those Mshloti buildings. We're also literally on top of a river. And I worry that we could have flooding 
in a few years, because these floods are getting bigger and bigger, which will definitely affect Nshlanga in a way similar to what's happened in Mshloti. Maybe it, the deterioration and the damage won't reach uh, Terra Mer, but it could. And I'm actually quite worried about it. Strange things are happening. And uh, that building, along with uh, the others on the road, is actually built into a massive sandbank. That's not a, uh, a mountain. and There's no rock there. It just appears to be a massive sandbank. And that's where we are situated. So that's my take. So on that very cheerful note, thank you for that. Right? <laughs> Sorry uh, about that. No, no, it's, it's a sobering, it's a sobering prospect. So thank you for that. All right, guys, um, let's leave that point for now. Uh, Jerry, uh, or rather Dave, we we eagerly await the um, recommendations from the leak detector company. If you can get them to extend their report to maybe cover some of the areas um, that Jerry has mentioned. Mm -hmm. Um, Dave, that's certainly well, something you need to take into consideration. Oh, yeah. no, it's not bad. No. No, 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 I don't know. Like me. Mervyn, can I ask you to just mute your uh, supper di supper discussion? Yeah. Yeah, that's what we do every week. Literally every week. Mervyn, can you mute your supper discussion? <laughs> All right, I've just muted Mervyn. Okay. Ivan, right. they, Ivan, just to come back to that, they will give us a full written report in about three to five days. Fantastic. Thank you. And please, if you could ask them to just extend their report to cover some of those concerns that Jerry was talking about. I mean, that is will particularly do. concerning. Thank you for that. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, any further matters arising? Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, we've covered insurance and we left it at 100 million. And maybe we should look at it and increase it. It's not, it doesn't do too much on the premium, but seeing what's happened around us, I think we should really look at that insurance value and up it. Ron, just what, in case. Ron, can I ask you for your opinion in that regard as an expert? No, I, I might have been an expert at one time, but I really don't have an expert uh, opinion on what's happening now. I can't even tell you if uh, we are safe from uh, uh, an insurance point of view on potential damage from the kinds of, of things which have happened in Mshloti. I'm, I'm not even sure that we're protected against that. So I can't really advise on the value of the building. I, I don't know. Purvis, can I ask is... you for your advice in that regard? Um, Ivan, one must remember if, if, if a building gets so damaged that it, it must be demolished in total, the insurance company won't pay you out more than what a similar quality building will cost to build. So even if, you, if we insure it now for 200 million, and they determine no, 100 million will replace a, uh, the building with a similar quality building with modern building material, they will only pay you 100 million. They won't pay you 200 million. Jeannie? Yeah. What do you think about yeah. that? Well, well, we, we've asked the expert, but I do believe maybe we should add a little more because insurance never pays the full value. Um, I don't know. That's just a thought I had. Um, Ron, do you I'm going to come back to you, Ron. Do you know anybody we could talk to uh, soberly? Sorry, Celeste. Soberly about this issue, so <laughs> oh, that we can done. we can actually get good advice. Look, the, the only thing we can do is go to a noted valuator, and there would be specific uh, valuation people in Durban, and the agents would advise on that. They do it regularly, and it's something that we should have done almost on an annual basis, where they update the previous years comments and valuation. Who do we currently use? Do you know? No idea. Uh, Ivor, can I help there? Uh, yes. uh, the, the company that did the valuation two years ago, his name is Murfin, Murfin value, Valuers. Yeah, they that rings a bell. They are a large company, but it won't help to go to the valuation company. You must go to Santom and ask Santom exactly how the, the policy works. And yes. If if you can insure it for 150 million, will they pay out 150 million? No, they won't. 
ask the insurance people. Uh, the valuers can only tell you what they already told you two, two years ago in the valuation report. Could I think Ko Kogi should follow up with the insurance, insurance company and ask them, or we can ask. Kubis is our insurance company, Santa. Yes. Yeah. Santa. Okay, Kogi, can you and I maybe take this offline and have a chat to Santa then? Do Zoom with Santa. No problem. Guys, you right. can't. You you can't get. Uh, uh, I don't like to say you can't get dependable advice from an insurance company, but can I say that it's not the insurance company's uh, uh, position to advise on that sort of thing? The broker has to come to the party. And, and advise on these issues. They've got to be in a position to tell you <laughs> what kind of, of, of issues we may have if we have a, a total loss arising out of what's happened at Mshloti. We really do need to concentrate on that. And the broker's right, so got to sharpen his pencil and come with real clear advice. This will be covered, that won't be covered. So Ron, to know if, on if the basis building. of your availability and Kubis, on the basis of your availability, if we were to organize a, a Zoom with the broker and with Santam, uh, would you be prepared to attend so that we can ask all of the, the cogent questions? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll attend to that. Uh, Fantastic. Can I, I, can I just I, skip I, five cents worth? Sorry, sorry, Ivor. I would love to help, but it won't. I, I can, can't contribute. I'm, I'm a professional valuer. I've, I know nothing about the insurance side. Okay, all right, but so Ron, at least you doesn't can. help me to attend the. the all right, the, 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 Celeste, did you want to say something? Please, if I may, um, from Rodney's experiences in in um, Floaty, and he's been dealing with a lot of those tragedies there. What you need to be aware of with insurance companies is that they they will always find a loophole. What they're doing in a lot of the properties in Floaty is they're saying we're not covering you because your original design was inadequate. Mm. So yes. you need you and need that's to a be very valid. It's a very valid excuse. Exactly. And that's what and and they can say that about Terra Mar. Look, guys, exactly. we've had these cracks. We've had these leaks. The building wasn't designed to be built where it's built. It's built on a sandbank, whatever the case may be. But you need mm. to be aware of that. Well, what I can I and what I can do is, I uh, I don't know of anybody who's actually dealing with claims in Mshloti, but I could cast around and, and bring a former colleague to the party who's uh, dealing with a huge number of, of claims in, in the Durban area as a result of the recent floods. So I could bring a voice like that who, who will maybe be able to shed some light on, on our situation. All right. Yeah. Ron, please. Thank you very much. Yes, Kubis. Sorry. Can I just uh, give a little bit of information regarding the building of the property in 1985? Uh, for the people who don't know, my father was one of the four developers. The architects of that building were the same architects that uh, uh, was used for the cabanas. The, the four developers decided at that stage they are going to, to use absolutely the best people available. So they got the best architects. It was the architects of the cabanas. The structural engineers was a company called Brunette Kruger and Stoffberg. Brunette Kruger and Stoffberg was at that stage the leading structural engineering company in Natal. So if there's something wrong with a, with a structure, then the leading company in 1985 didn't do the job properly. But it, it wasn't fly by nights that, that designed the building or that were the structural engineers. It was the best people of the day. Well, that's very useful information. Uh, so nobody's going to say that, you know, we didn't do the right thing because that information, I'm sure it's somewhere and we've had the best. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, I think that's that's very useful. Yeah. Um, okay, so just to bring this point ahead, Ron, if you could please introduce us to the person you were talking about and we could organize a Zoom then with our broker thereafter as well as possibly with Santam, because we want to head off the kind of response to a calamity which says 
something was wrong. We're questioning how you built your building, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, and Kubis, we might very well call on you just to give us that background again, but in more detail. So thank you for that. All right. Sure, I'll make some inquiries. Thank you. And, 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 and certainly, um, Jeannie, thank you so much for raising that issue. It's critically important given what's going on in Schloti. All right, colleagues, thank you all so much. Um, uh, are there any uh, further items? Anything anybody wants to discuss or can we bring this, this meeting to a close? Ivor, just wanted to thank you very much. You did a good job of thanking everyone else, but um, immensely grateful for the leadership you take. So thank you and leading such effective sessions. Thank so you. much, much it. gratitude. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Guys, thank you very much. And uh, without further ado, Thanks, I'll bring the matter to a close. This meeting will be available. The recording of the meeting will be available. And obviously, Kogi will prepare minutes. Thank you all so much. And Celeste, uh, have another one on us. Well, <laughs> 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 I'm quite jealous. Bye. You look envious. I am envious. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Cheers. Thank you.